FEMA finalized a rule today that it says will help flooded communities build back in a more resilient way. FEMA says it's an attempt to guard against future floods by modernizing the science and data used to determine how at risk a community is to flooding as the climate changes. The new rule goes into effect in early September. It provides a federal cost share of about 75 percent for a project's total cost to make public infrastructure more flood resistant. It includes municipal buildings, fire and police stations and hospitals, but it won't pay to rebuild private homes. In other national headlines, we send it over to Alan Miller. Well, Monica, Secretary of State Antony Blinken kicked off the NATO Open Forum this morning in Washington, D.C. He announced that the first batch of F-16 fighter jets are on their way to Ukraine. Blinken also solidified NATO's support for Ukraine as it fends off Russia's invasion. Among those answering reporter questions at NATO today, Secretary General Jan Stoltenberger, Stoltenberg addressed Trump's criticism of the alliance, saying he expects the U.S. to stand with NATO regardless of the outcome of the presidential election. I expect that uh, regardless of the outcome of the U.S. elections, uh, the U.S. Uh, will remain uh, a strong and staunch NATO ally uh, for three reasons. One is that it is in the U.S. security interest to have a, a strong uh, a NATO. Uh, NATO is good for Europe, but it's also good for the United States. It makes the United States uh, stronger and safer because in NATO, the United States has something no other ally, no other major power has, and that is more than 30 friends and allies. Russia doesn't have that. China doesn't have that. He says uh, former President Trump's main objective, objections that other nations aren't pulling their weight have largely been addressed. The U.S. military pier off the coast of Gaza is set to be permanently removed as early as next week. With land crossing frequently closed, the pier was built to deliver aid to civilians suffering hunger as the Israel-Hamas war continues. But the $230 million temporary operation has been plagued with problems since its inception. The pier is expected to be used at least one more time this week to deliver any remaining humanitarian aid into Gaza. In Gaza, UN experts have declared widespread famine. They say the deaths of children from malnutrition and dehydration indicates that health and social structures have been attacked and have, are critically weakened. Humanitarian aid workers continue to face tremendous risks while trying to distribute desperately needed aid, adding that the majority of the infrastructure supporting humanitarian work in Gaza has been destroyed. And one of the stories we're working on for First News at 6, with the Republican National Convention less than a week away, we'll look at how that event compares to state-level conventions. Back to you, Monica.